Americans are digging into their retirement funds, not to fund their retirement now, but to fund their lifestyles. Bank of America put out a report this week where they said that more Americans are tapping into the 401k balances to fund financial distress. What they said is the number of people who made a hardship withdrawal out of the 401k in the second quarter of 2023 is up 36% from one year ago. Now, why are more and more people pulling money out of the 401k? Well, the cost of living has gone up significantly. And so now when you look at the cost of your mortgage, the cost of your rent, the cost of your groceries, the cost of vacations, you have to make a decision. Do you want to continue funding this lifestyle or do you want to cut back? And a lot of people are choosing to continue funding this lifestyle, which is also why this week we saw the total credit card balance in America pass one trillion dollars for the first time in history because well the cost of living is up and people want to keep spending that money now this had me thinking is the reason why people are pulling money out of their 401k because they have so much more money in their 401k and that's when i did some digging by the way this background behind me is manhattan wall street is just down over there and on august 15th 2023 it is the 52nd anniversary of the dollar being taken off of the gold standard and i am hosting my first ever live investor summit it's completely free i'm going to be going over how our economy has changed how money has changed over time and how you can find investment opportunities in this changing economy this investor summit is completely free. So if you'd like to join me and learn about how you can invest your money in this economy, I got the link for you to how you can join down in the description below. Just make sure you register because there's a limited number of people that can actually attend live. That's what our software says. I'm sorry. So if you'd like to join, make sure you register sooner rather than later. So I was digging into now 401k balances to see if maybe 401k balances have gone up so significantly that people feel okay pulling money out of the 401ks. And what I found is that between the end of 2021 until the end of 2022, the average 401k balance, according to Fidelity, was down 23%. So I don't think that was the reason why people were pulling money out of the 401k accounts. And the reason why balances were down were also partially due to the fact that we saw a downward stock market towards the end of 2022. So then I thought maybe people contributed a lot more money into the 401k in 2022 where people felt okay to pull money out. And so I started doing some digging. And what I found is that yes, people did contribute more money into the 401k. And the data says that in the first quarter of 2022, Americans contributed an additional 0.1% to the 401k in 2022, the first quarter of 2022. So yes, people did contribute more money to the 401k in 2022. However, it doesn't seem like the more money they invested was enough to justify this 36% jump of the number of people pulling money out of the 401k for a hardship withdrawal, which brings me back to the whole idea of, well, maybe something's really going on with this higher cost of living and we have yet to feel the impacts of the higher inflation and the higher interest rates. And this is where you have banks, a lot of banks saying, this is great news. People are spending money. This shows the health of our consumer. This shows the health of our economy. Americans are spending and the economy is booming. Yeah, guess what? When people spend money, somebody else gets rich. When you spend your money, you're making somebody else rich. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you can afford to do so, right? There's nothing wrong with buying nice things. There's nothing wrong with buying something and making somebody else rich. But there is something wrong when you are sacrificing your own wealth or potential to become wealthy, to become rich. And now is going to a whole different extreme because now to afford today's lifestyle, not only are people digging out of their retirement savings to continue funding their lifestyles, but people are also going deeper and deeper into debt, which is why we just broke a credit card debt record. Here's what Bank of America had to say about this new report about this booming 401k hardship withdrawal. They said that this data tells two stories, one of balance growth optimism from younger employees and maintaining contributions contrasted with a trend of increased plan withdrawals aka younger employees are saying yeah we have more money we have the ability to do this our balance is good so we can pull money out and the other is increased plan withdrawals which is more and more people saying yeah maybe we can pull some money out of our 401k it's easy for us to tap into our retirement savings to keep doing this it's easier for us to keep funding our lifestyles with this 
And then they went on to say that this year, more employees are understandingly prioritizing short-term expenses over long-term saving. Now again, what does that mean? It's good for the economy if you keep spending all of your money because that keeps the system running. But there's a limit to how much people can spend and there's a limit to how much debt people can take on. Uh, this is a report from the Federal Reserve Bank, the New York Federal Reserve Bank, which said the U.S. household's credit card debt surpassed the one trillion mark for the first time ever. And that came because now we saw credit card debt jump up by $45 billion. So now we have the highest level of household debt in the history of American history. And this also comes at a time where interest rates are also rising, which means that now when you go out and you put money on your credit card, the interest rate that you have to pay is a variable interest rate because credit cards are not a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. They are variable interest rates, which means that now because of the higher interest rates, your payments are rising. Even if your balance isn't rising, your payments are rising because the cost to service that credit card debt is also rising. And then there's another whammy coming. This is from a CNN article that was reporting about the Bank of America report on the 401k hardship withdrawals. And that next whammy is student loan payments because federal student loan payments are set to resume this October after three years of being paused, which means that right now we have a big chunk of America that is struggling financially. How do we know this? Because credit card debt is on the all time high. We're seeing people pull money out of their 401k funds to continue funding their expenses. And then on top of that, coming October, a lot of people are going to be slapped with a brand new or feels like brand new student loan payment that a lot of Americans have forgotten about. And at, that's at a time where inflation is still making things expensive. So that's going to change the dynamic of people's ability to spend because if people are spending their 401k money to fund their lifestyles today what's going to happen when student loans restart as well and this is where it is becoming so 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 important for you to be understanding of what's going on in the economy our economic system runs on spending the more money you spend the more money somebody else makes that's how the economic system works but this means you have to understand this that way you can make yourself rich before you make somebody else rich that means you don't spend all of your money today that way you can make yourself rich and once you become rich, now, yeah, go on and spend your money because you have the money to do so. And when you want to go out and spend money, you be smart. You know what you can afford. You know what you can spend. And that means sometimes you got to make some sacrifices, which is the most difficult thing, especially after you go through a period of high inflation. Because inflation disproportionately hurts consumers. Inflation hurts the ability to consume. Because now when inflation happens, that means you need more dollars to buy things. That's what inflation does. And the average American is only a consumer. Well, inflation also benefits the business owners and the investors because now when I'm a business and I have to sell my stuff, I can sell my stuff for a higher price. So if you are an investor or you're a business owner, inflation doesn't hurt you the same way, but it hurts consumers. Now, the average American is only a consumer, which means inflation only hurts them. And this is where now we're starting to see the impacts of the higher inflation. And now not just that, we also have the higher interest rates, which means that when you go on to spend money, if you want to go buy a home, you want to buy a car, if you're financing your car, which I don't recommend you do, but a lot of Americans do. If you're financing your car, if you have credit card debt, well now all these debts now become more expensive as well. And this is where now you're gonna to have to make the decision of, do you want to get financially smart? Do you want to now make those lifestyle decisions today? Because if we continue going down this path, where eventually people get tapped out, Eventually, people will run out of runway to keep spending on their credit card. People will run out of runway to keep going into debt. People will run out of runway to keep spending money. People are digging into their savings balances. People are now digging into their retirement balances. When people run out of runway to keep spending money, that's when the economy comes to a halt. Because if people can't spend, businesses can't make money. If businesses can't make money, they're not making profits. And if businesses can't make a profit, they gotta let go of their employees. And if you gotta let go of your employees, well, you can see where that starts to go. That hurts more people's ability to spend. And again, nobody can predict what's gonna to happen tomorrow, but we see a lot of things different happening in the economy right now. Moody's came out and they downgraded 10 different banks. Fitch downgraded the United States. We have concerns in our economy. 
We have investors sitting on the sidelines waiting to invest, but we do have concerns in the economy. We have debt levels reaching brand new record highs. The Federal Reserve Bank has raised interest rates to the highest levels in more than 20 years. And to top it all off, we have student loan payments restarting in October. This is where now understanding all of this, being patient, working on the financial education, working on building that preparedness, working on putting some money aside that way we can capitalize on opportunities becomes so important because we are going through a shift in our economy. And this is going to continue on for at least the next two years because we're going to see a big chunk of corporate debt and a big chunk of commercial real estate debt readjust in the next 24 months. So yes, this is going to last at least two years. But this is where now understanding this, preparing, watching, understanding. That way you can capitalize on opportunities because, well, the people that understand this and the people that are educated and the people that are prepared are going to be able to build immense amounts of wealth over the next 10 years. The question is, is that going to be you or are you just going to watch it happen? And that's one of the things I'm going to be talking about in the Investor Summit, which is why if you haven't joined yet, make sure you do so. But this is where it's so crucial to understand what's going on because we're going through a big change in our economy.